it's not just the West that's supporting Ukraine. On the other side of this conflict, Russia's allies are also coming out in support of the Kremlin, and President Biden has rejected a new 12-point peace plan that was proposed by China. Yeah, the, the Chinese have signaled its willingness, willingness to play mediator, but Beijing has yet to condemn its ally Russia or even use the word invasion, especially in that peace plan. CNN's Mark Stewart has more. We have China trying to portray itself as a neutral peace broker, this despite its no limits pledge with Russia. On Friday, China released a position paper, a 12 point document, which among other things, calls for a resumption of peace talks with China continuing to play a constructive role. Yet there are no specifics on what that would look like. In addition, China has avoided calling the conflict in Ukraine an invasion. The paper also calls for an end to unilateral sanctions and resolution to the humanitarian crisis. It also says nuclear weapons should not be used and nuclear wars must not be fought. Yet the document fails to acknowledge Russia's violation of Ukrainian sovereignty. Here's the view from a top State Department official on China's role. It can't simply be a cynical ceasefire that allows the Russians the time to go home, rest, refit, and return. If uh, Xi Jinping can get Putin and his army uh, out of Ukraine, I think we'd all applaud and, and, and give a peace prize. As far as reaction, Ukraine's charged affairs called the paper a good sign, but added it would like to see China do more to end the war. This paper comes as officials from the West have raised concerns that China may be considering providing Russia with lethal military force, with NATO's chief warning that would be a big mistake. Mark Stewart, CNN, Tokyo. Our thanks to Mark Stewart for that reporting. Uh, let's discuss uh, this Chinese peace plan, aid going to Ukraine, and the somber anniversary with CNN military analyst and retired Major General James Spider Marks and Atlantic staff writer Ann Applebaum. She's also a senior fellow at the Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies and the author of Twilight of Democracy, The Seductive Lure of Authoritarianism. Thank you both for joining us this morning. And a year into this conflict, who is winning this war? By all accounts, uh, the Ukrainians are winning the war. Uh, the Russians believed the war would be a three-day, maybe a three-week event. They were um, they were prepared already to to conduct parades in Kiev. They had they arrived with their dress uniforms. Um, since then, they've had to completely readjust their war games um, repeatedly. Uh, the Ukrainians have pushed them back, have held them to the line. Um, and are now preparing a new offensive. Uh, you know, we don't know exactly what that will look like or when it will take place, um, but, the, but the momentum remains on the side of Ukraine. And General, curious to get your thoughts, where do you, think, where do you see things as they stand now? Well, clearly Ukraine is doing a magnificent job at the tactical level of engagement uh, from a military guy's perspective. They are they are engaging the Russians very aggressively, incredibly creative use of manpower of the forces that they have. I mean, this is innovative warfare that even the United States military is learning some lessons from. Um, I agree with Anne, but at the strategic level, Russia has not departed. Russia's goal is to try to wear down the will of the Ukrainians to resist. That has not happened yet, but we are seeing from the words of President Zelensky that 2023 is the year of victory or peace, as he indicated. So unless the Ukrainians can get more of what they need and faster, the operational maneuver piece, you have the tactical fight, but you've got to tie it together and achieve operational momentum. That won't be achieved unless they can get more faster this year. So you move down the path of what is the likelihood of some negotiated settlement. Is that possible? Zelensky has said it's not, but you need to look at it realistically and think maybe that is a possibility, but that's up to the Ukrainians to determine. And to a degree, I uh, recognized in President Zelensky's comments uh, an urgency that this could be the, the year the war ends in part because Ukrainian officials have kind of been irked by the suggestion from the West that they'll be there helping as long as they need to be. Their fear is that as a war of attrition, delaying 
uh, a more aggressive push against Russia means ultimately defeat for Ukraine. So where do you see that line for aid uh, stopping? Should the United States give them those F-16s, for example? So the F-16s won't make a difference in the next few months uh, because it takes a long time to learn how to use them. So in that sense, I think it's a it's a little bit of a red herring that that issue. Um, far more important are um, you, you know is ammunition um, as well as long range weapons that will enable the Ukrainians to hit long range targets behind the lines. Um, some there was uh, your reporters this morning said that some targets had been hit in Mariupol overnight. Um, that's good news. That could mean um, that could mean that they're beginning to get the technology together to do that. Um, you know, the other important point to make, I think, is that you know this is also a psychological war of attrition that both sides are waiting for the other to give up. Um, this is why it was so important that President Biden went to Kiev. Uh, it's so important that a number of Republicans have been clear in their support for Ukraine, uh, because Putin's goal is to make it seem like it's it's never going to end and that he will always get weapons and he's never going to leave. Um, and our, we have to demonstrate that we won't be leaving either. So those things, I think, are a little bit more important than whether Biden makes an announcement about F-16s. In general, obviously, uh, a big concern now is China's role in all of this. The Biden administration putting forth this intelligence that Beijing is considering supplying lethal aid uh, to the Kremlin. How could that change the dynamic on the battlefield? Well, if they chose to do it, it would depend upon what they provide. And again, what's the amount of the support that they're providing? Um, look, Russia's way of war is to put young men that essentially are not very well trained into the fight. This is a, a, a slaughterhouse in many cases. Um, without being flippant, my concern would be the Ukrainians are going to run out of ammunition because they have so it's so target rich. You're going to see Russian bodies continue to get piled up. But that is not an incentive for Russia to stop. I think what China is going to do is it will continue behind the scenes to provide support to Russia in, in terms of its position not to acknowledge that Russia did anything wrong. But China views the world through a financial transactional lens. This war in Ukraine is bad for business. This is, you, you, don't, you don't reinforce success. I mean, you reinforce success, you don't reinforce failure. And the Russians are failing in Ukraine. There's no reason, there's no incentive for China to reinforce and to support Russia militarily in this way. And also, China wants to have a vibrant and fulsome and rich relationship with Western European countries. It also wants to try to do that with the United States, albeit it's starting to cool a little bit in terms of U.S.-Chinese relationships. So there's every reason for China not to do this. If they were, it would be a big mistake. It would be a big mistake for the long term. And I think China would then get wrapped up into this ganglia of this mess in Ukraine, and they don't want a part of it. 